Hey everybody, it's Patrick Allman, and welcome to episode 13, show 13 of the Stop Doing Nothing podcast and video show, the show for high achievers. Uh, this is Patrick Allman from StopDoingNothing.com, and if you're listening on the podcast, I would encourage you to go over and check out the video on YouTube of the same show, and if you are on YouTube seeing my face right now, just so you know, over at StopDoingNothing.com, there's also the podcast. So we are producing in multiple formats, if you are a watcher or a subscriber or more of a podcast listener, be sure to check out our multimedia formats. This is a podcast that I put together every week when I am running the schedule right. Um, and it's all based on the things that I share at StopDoingNothing.com, which have to do with being a high achiever, being highly productive, growing as a human being, uh, time management, financial management, all those things that I've learned over my decades of living to make us better human beings and the mistakes I've learned and why I want you to learn from them and things like that. So if you haven't done so, I would encourage you to go over to StopDoingNothing.com and learn some more and also watch some of the back episodes and listen to some of the back episodes of the podcast because those are all over there on the right-hand side. We are in episode 13 today. And this one we're going to be talking about five things that I wish I would have learned or wish somebody would have told me as I was graduating high school. And this one came up because every now and then I get asked to speak about um, lessons that kids should know as they're either leaving college or entering college or leaving high school. And so this is a topic I get called upon to speak on very frequently. And what I'm hoping is that there are some younger show watchers, some younger podcast listeners and that are going to pick up some of these things. So again, they don't make some of the issues or some of the mistakes I've had in life. Uh, and if not, if your parents, please do me a favor and send them a link to this show because these are five key things that will will make their life easier. Will make it so they're not becoming so opinionated, so they don't get as many arguments, as, as many fights, and just so they kind of have a good foundation for everything else that comes. Um, oftentimes, you hear that these these lists of things that you should have learned when you were younger being expressed in terms of, well, things I wish I would have known in my 20s or my 30s or things I would have known, uh, you know, as I was graduating college. And I'm thinking that by the time you get to college, uh, your opinions and the, the way that you think are pretty set. I mean, they can be changed, but they're they're pretty fixed and they, they obviously get harder to change as you get older. Once you're through college, uh, you have some pretty firm opinions, and obviously the older we get, the harder it is to change our opinions. So I'm thinking that this list right here is perfect for somebody, like I said, who is graduating high school or maybe graduating junior high school. Uh, and I, again, like I, said, like I said, these are lessons that I've learned over the years. So again, do with these what you will, but if you adopt the five things I'm about to say, or if you pay attention to these concepts, you will not get as many fights, you will, you will just... Overall, I think have a better life. So let's just skip why I want you to know these things because they're really good things and get into the actual list themselves. Um, the, and these are in no particular order. I think I saved number five. I think I like number five for the way it was for the, the final one. But the first one that I want you to realize is that there are no right and wrongs in the world. I guess I should say there are very few right and wrongs because, of course, let's never speak in absolutes, right? Let's never, ever speak in absolutes. But there are very few rights and wrongs in the world. Most of what we know and most of what we discuss in this world are opinions. They are our opinions. They are opinions of other people. They are opinions of experts. They are opinions of theologians. They are opinions of politicians. They are just what other people think. And we spend most of our life consuming opinions of others. And I think when you're really young, you tend to adopt the opinions of your parents, the opinions of your teachers, the opinions of what you see on TV. When we're really young, we tend to adopt just about everything that somebody older than us says as actual fact. If somebody says that, you know, uh, and this is a good example, Democrats are bad, Republicans are good. If someone tells you that when you're 12 or 13, you're going to believe that because it's an elder person that told you that. It's somebody who you know, like, and respect told you that. So you're going to believe that. So we just tend to take things as as fact when really what we're listening to are people's opinions that are being shoved into our heads as facts. 
And so just realize that as you grow older, that there are very few uh, rights and wrongs, very few facts in the world. And also be aware that people love to state their opinions as facts. And there are there are political people who will argue up and down that a particular political party is great or a particular political party is bad. And they will give you the reasons. Reason A, B, C, and D is why this particular political party is awesome and why this one is horrible. And really they're just, they're just opinions. And... Just know the difference between facts and very fervent opinions, very hard, strong opinions. And also, be willing to to not fight for opinions because people get into a lot of fights when they really stick to their opinions really closely and they hold them close and dear to their chest. Um, so I want you to think more. That actually segues away pretty well into number two, which most of your opinions are opinions of other people. Like I said, we get that from growing up. They're not our own opinions, or I guess you could say they're our own opinions, who are developed, which are developed as a result of hearing opinions of other people, who are in turn developed from hearing opinions of their people and their people and their people. So think about it. If you are the great 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 grandchild of a gentleman, and he told his son a particular viewpoint, and that son passed on to his son, etc., 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 and that viewpoint was never changed, well, what you're really doing is you're hearing the viewpoint of, of you know several generations of your family a while back. So to that end, what I would like to encourage people to do, especially the younger people, is to spend some time going out and investigating uh, the world on your own. And I see this a lot on, on social media because a lot of us now get our our opinions from what we see on social media and our Facebook feed, uh, we're, a, we're a headline-based world. We just jump to conclusions and we instantly assume something is true based on a headline. And and very often what you see is, uh, and I'm not going to sit here and do one of those blame the media things because that doesn't count, but very often what you'll see is headlines that are created to get you to read the story. And that story is a blogger's opinion based very loosely on a news story. And that news story is the reporter's opinion based very loosely on a sliver of information. And that sliver of information is taken out of a bunch of information. So oftentimes, by the time information hits our ears, it's gone through several opinionated sources and it's gone through a quote-unquote a media source. And the, the gap between fact and what reaches our ears gets larger and larger and larger with every iteration, with every some, with every time someone tells that story, where every single time someone spreads that information out, the, uh, the, the gap of, between fact and fiction gets bigger and bigger and bigger every time. And it's not uncommon nowadays for me to see a story that I have to click through and click through and click through and eventually dig down into the official source where I get the first-hand information. And I end up sharing that back with people who share the, you know, fifth generation story with me. They're like, "That? How did you find that?" And and so, when you hear an opinion of something, um, something really good or really bad, spend some time checking the facts, checking the sources before you form strong opinions. Do not ever, ever, ever get a new story or get a story from someplace else from one of your friends, and instantly take everything as fact. You've probably heard the phrase, question everything. Well, I'm a firm believer on that. When you get those kind of things, dig into the original source and form your own opinions based on as much fact as possible. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to avoid having opinions because opinions are, are great things to have, and we should all form our opinions, but I'm a firm believer of forming my opinions based on as many factual things as I can get and not other people's uh, opinions, if you will. So, again, remember that your opinions that you grew up with are opinions of other people, that they were opinions of other people, and you should spend a lot of time getting to the crux or getting to the meat of the thing. The third thing that I wish I had learned when I was younger, in my post-junior high school, post-high school years, is that I need to stop doing all of my learning just in the classroom. When we are younger, um, one of the things that we are taught is that you go to school to learn, and before school opens up, you're not really doing much learning, you're screwing around. And as soon as school gets out, you're back to screwing around, and your job is to get that homework done as soon as possible, 
and, and go on to something else that's more fun, that's not really involved learning, that's more along the lines of playing. And so one of the things I learned as I got older is that is that learning is just a nonstop process. If, if I want to know something, I don't have to take a class for it. I can, well, nowadays we can just look it up online, but, you know, libraries have always been around. Home study courses have always been around. Do not wait for the perfect learning environment, be it a, a high school or a university session. Do not wait for that perfect environment to, to learn something. If you want to know something, pick up a damn book. Go to the bookstore. Go get a magazine. Hop online. Go buy a course. It's amazing that how many colleges and universities are putting some of their entire curriculum, some of their entire coursework online. So, you know, if you want to go learn, if you want to go learn what people learn when they take a class on modern history, you can take the course online for free, like at MIT, or if it was something scientific or technological. There's, there's, there's not a perfect learning environment. It's not the classroom. It hasn't been the classroom for a long time. All the great things that you you learn, you pick up in the world, you pick them up from books, you pick them up from non-classroom sources. That's what that's what's happened to me is when all the great things that I've learned, be it public speaking, be it computer programming, be it uh, what you're seeing right now, the podcasting, the video work, the the way I dress, all that stuff I haven't learned in classroom environments. So get this concept out of your head that the only place you can learn something is a classroom. And if you're not taking a class, you can't learn. If you want to learn something, you know, find a way to get it. Libraries are still free last time I checked. With the internet being up 24 hours a day, if you want to take a class at 3 o'clock in the morning on you know, theological history or uh, how DNA structure works, that information is available to us 24-7. So learn to learn outside of the classroom and learn to absorb as much information as possible whenever you possibly can do that. And the fourth one, the fourth lesson now, I've gone, well, my first three were kind of, well, now I guess you can go along with four as also as the same path, is, you know what? Keep your damn nose out of other people's business. Throughout elementary school and junior high school and high school and all throughout life, at some point in time, there are certain people who become obsessed or consumed with other people's lives. They either go out of their way to make their life a living hell, they spend time watching TV, observing other people's lives because they think it's more interesting than their own life. And I think that's a really a really sad, unfortunate way to use your time is to spend it watching somebody else living their life. To me, there's there are a few things that are more sad than sitting on the couch on TV observing somebody else's life. Because what you're doing is you're... Let's forget the unhealthy part of just sitting all the time. But you are burning your daylight hours. You're burning your time. You're burning the time where you can be creating great experiences watching somebody else's great experiences. You're burning time that you could be outside having fun uh, watching somebody else have fun. There's nothing more sad than, than watching somebody uh, on TV who's you know, climbing mountains or, or going on adventures or running along the beach or doing things that are wild and crazy and fast, and you're, you're on TV with the remote control watching that stuff? Are you kidding me? That's a freaking joke. Don't, 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 don't spend your life watching somebody else's life and keep your nose out of other people's business. Those two kind of go hand in hand there. But my whole point there is, is is if you spend more time on your life and less time worrying about what somebody else is doing with their life and, and what they're doing behind closed doors and, and who they're seeing and who they're marrying, your life will be richer. You can create a better experience for your life. You don't have to sit around all the time and say, oh, my life is boring and I never get to do anything. You know what? You can't. You, you have no excuse for that when you're, when you're watching somebody else's life and you're sticking your nose in other people's business. So, again, try to spend as little time as your life as possible, if not zero time, just keeping your nose in somebody else's business. The last one is one that if you ever see me speak at any kind of conference or any youth groups, is the power of communication. And if I had to pick one thing out of these five that I wish that I would have learned when I was younger and I want you to learn uh, as someone who's younger in age than I am, is that the power of communication is one of the best possible skills you can have in life. 
and I'm, I'm going to mainly refer to public speaking. I've probably only been speaking steadily in the past 10 years, whether it's for free speaking engagements, whether it's at conferences, whether it's on camera. Uh, the, I've only been doing that really strong maybe the past 10 years, maybe 17 years since I've been in business. And I am really jealous of people, of kids who pick up this same skill, the skill of great communication, whether in junior high or whether in high school. I wasn't the kind of guy who took debate classes or speech classes or poise classes or appearance classes or, or, or cotillions or any of that stuff. And I really regret that because what I've learned as I get older is that the people that, that, that accomplish their goals, the people that run great businesses, the people that are able to inspire and move mountains and move other people and control groups and get the things they want done and help other people, those people are more than likely really great communicators. I run a marketing firm, Focus Online Marketing Agency, and one of the lessons I preach to people is that a well, a poor product which is marketed well will always beat a great product which is marketed poorly. And public speaking is you marketing your ideas. It's you marketing your thoughts. It's you marketing your product or your service or your business. That's what public speaking is. And if you have to get up and do a presentation, let's imagine that you're at a conference someplace or you're at a place where you're bidding for work. And you have a mediocre product, but you have to get up in front of a panel of people who have to approve you. And they have to look at your presentation and decide solely based on your presentation whether or not they want to go with you. If you are, if you have an outstanding presentation, if you get up there excited and you make the people excited, they are going to be more inclined to buy, literally or figuratively, what you are selling than someone that just kind of has a really amazing and awesome product or an awesome service. But they get up there and they're kind of lackluster about it and they stumble over their words and they say some ums and they say some ahs and, and they don't get it out there that well. So remember that if you have great ideas or you want to have great ideas, you're going to have to learn to express them. And the best way you're going to learn how to express them is through the written word and through the spoken word. So out of all these number five, if there was one thing that I wish somebody had told me on the day I was graduating high school, it would be start taking public speaking classes and learn how to become a great public speaker. There are many organizations to do this. There are Toastmasters in every country, every city in the world. I would encourage you to also look at the National Speakers Association, which I'm a member of. Uh, and more often than not, people ask me, you know, how do you get started as a professional speaker? Where do I go to register as a speaker? There is no organization uh, or board or whatever you want to call it that says that, that basically where you register that says you're a professional speaker. You're a professional speaker the day you decide you're a professional speaker. That's something else I've learned is, is once I became a professional speaker is um, you know, you can join various boards and get various certifications and go through various skill training things and take various classes. But the day you decide you're a great communicator, excuse me, the day you decide that you are a professional speaker, you are a professional speaker. You can put up a website saying, hey, my name is Patrick Allman at PatrickAllman.com. I am a professional speaker. If you pay me, I will come speak to you on any topic that you see listed on my website or any topic that we talk about. Obviously, you're going to have a niche and a focus on a particular topic. But if you're the kind of person who is either really young or on an age and you want to go that route of being a professional speaker because you've seen, what at a conf you've seen a professional speaker at a conference and you've seen how they can move people and they can command mountains and they can, they can basically rule the world with their voice, then, then you know, just decide that you want to do that. Start practicing, join a Toastmasters group, and hang your hat out there someplace and say, you know what, I have this experience, I have this story, I have this thing I want to share with you. I am a professional speaker. And again, it's amazing how many times at a conference I get emails afterwards, I get text messages, I get calls, or I get people that just come up and shake my hand and say, how'd you, why are you so good at what you do? What classes did you take? Who was your mentor? And again, more often than not, I say, you know, I just decided to do it. I practice it every possible chance I can get. Uh, I'm singing to myself in the car. I talk to myself sometimes in the car as I'm on my way to a presentation. I do things like these video recordings and these podcasts to practice my expressiveness, to practice how good I am at a topic. So again, 
uh, running through these five again, the first one is there are no right and wrongs in the world. The second one, that most of your opinions are opinions of other people. The third one is stop doing all of your learning in the classroom. Four, keep your nose out of other people's business. And number five, uh, you cannot beat the skill of the power of communication and the power of public speaking. And please, please work on enhancing that skill. This has been Patrick Allman of StopDoingNothing.com. You've been watching episode 13 of the Stop Doing Nothing podcast slash Stop Doing Nothing show, whatever you want to call it. Please be sure you subscribe on iTunes. Uh, post reviews on iTunes, if you would, whether it's one star or a five star. Preferably, it's a five star, and I want to hear about it. Uh, also, we have this program on Stitcher and on SoundCloud. And you can just look up Stop Doing Nothing, either one of those places or on iTunes. Or look up Patrick Allman, you'll find me also. The best place is to go to the website, uh, stopdoingnothing.com. And over on the right-hand side, we have uh, links to our video channel, links to our Facebook page, which I encourage you to join, and links to Stitcher, SoundCloud, and the iTunes podcast, which you're going to subscribe to. One more time, this has been Patrick Allman signing off. Have a great week, and we will see you uh, for the next podcast, which will be a week from now. And I believe that is April 4th. Next Thursday is when I record the next one. I'm always interested in your feedback, and I'm also always interested in any particular topics you want to hear about. Please share those with me on Facebook, on Twitter. I'm at Patrick Allman on Twitter. Or email, you can email me at patrick at allaboutfocus.com. Until next podcast, until next show, have a great week. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.